In the previous video, I was talking about leaching and uh, alleviation and trying to compare the two. There's one more thing that I would add here, possibly a little addition could be that the E or the alleviated horizon is also called the Albeck. So Albeck is going to be the horizon that has lost some of these clay organic materials in suspension. Why I say this? Because the Albeck and alleviated horizon will appear in another process, another soil translocation process, which is podzolization. So I can say that podzolization is going to be pretty much a kind of combination of leaching and alluviation. I'm going to put it over here instead of leaching so that we see this little bit more complex uh, soil development process here just to compare. And uh, I'm going to make reference to leaching here as well whenever it's relevant so I'm also going to leave these parts over here because they're also what are relevant forming factors of the puzzle soil I'm just going to come here and say puzzleization And this will be what results in the podzol soil. Where do we find podzol? Many places. It's quite a strange thing that we can find it in Australia, Africa, but very often in places like uh, Siberia or Finland. So where we would have uh, the boreal forest with pine trees, conifers. So what are some of the factors that are relevant is partly that again we should have more precipitation than evapotranspiration we will see that organic acids from the original or perhaps currently existing like exactly like conifers forests so the vegetation will lead to acidification of the soil but also it's time that is relevant so whenever these processes together leaching and alleviation happen for a long long time and the conditions are unchanging then we will have puzzleization go through the, the stages of development and what we will have in this case then is that we not only have kind of leaching and alleviation, but it's more of a severe process involving some of these what we call uh, sesquioxides and this will be about uh, iron and aluminium. These will be lost and so we can just start saying that we have an A horizon as usual. This will be including some of these uh, like uh, organic acid forming materials. So organics humus whatsoever and then with this downward percolation or trickling down of the water then we can see that leaching will go through and so again humus remains in the A and we will find a very strong like alleviated or albeck 
horizon. So that's why we can say that here in this E horizon, we can also call it again Albic, we will find processes happening of like leaching. But at the same time, again, we can say that it's similar to alluviation as well. So what will move downwards is both what we would find in like a horizon as well, so humus and some of these like uh, sesquioxides, as we say, things like ferric oxide or aluminium oxide. So a sesquioxide will be an, a kind of uh, mineral com compound which contains three oxygens and something else, iron or aluminium. In this case, we have two of both of these. And so the actual B horizon that we would find under the E, and here we see that there's actually a B T horizon that would develop. So actually I can even delete this B because it doesn't exist as such. Here we find a BT horizon, and in this case, for fertilization, we'd have first a BH that develops with humus. I just put here the humus, which is being, say, washed out of the E horizon through like leaching and process of like similar to alleviation and what will happen is basically we're not speaking about alleviation here but accumulation it's different word but accumulation and i just put here acc so accumulation of humus which is then a kind of dark color. And then again, I put here that there will be not only the H for humus, but the S for the specific sesquioxide. compounds which will be things like aluminium oxide or ferric oxide Fe2O3 so these will be again accumulated under one another and this is why on the in the pictures you would see that puzzle will be something like an a horizon organic material yes it's kind of dark we have an e albec it's like albec so alba it, it comes from the word like white it's colorless it's mainly made of sand not much else remained sand silt but not things such as clay or things such as humus remaining there. It's really a leached, bleached material there. And under that, then we find humus first and then the sexy sides. And also we can say that then we have B 
uh, horizon and the sea horizon which again is going to be the weathered parent material it's kind of unchanged there is not much of uh, change in the sea horizon and we also might say that some of this material will be washed down into the groundwater I think uh, this is just how we can think about puzzleization and again there are bits of leaching and bits of the illuviation included here in puzzleization that's why i say that puzzleization itself can be imagined as a combination of illuviation and leaching it's kind of a stronger process than these two and then what else can we speak about opposite in a way to puzzleization but again in some ways similar to the previous two especially including leaching because it will involve like a loss of some of these solution of the kinds of ions calcium magnesium natrium potassium and so on that will be and i'm just going to put it right here ferrolitization so it's a different combination of the various processes that put together these types And again, this can be spelled as fertilization. In some cases, I found it that way, fertilization, and so on. So what we will have here is again precipitation, organic acids, and acidification of the soil in the first place. So more rainfall than evapotranspiration. What happens? We have an A horizon we have a b horizon it's not the kind of elevation that goes on in case of puzzleization with this kind of e horizon albic horizon developing instead it's kind of the opposite because it will be exactly the silica that will move downwards what kind of process is involved in this one then is similar to leaching because it's kind of uh, the clay that falls apart and clay would involve not only the kinds of like uh, ferric or aluminium compounds but also silica so si and so the silica will be the one which in this case move downwards where towards the sea horizon it will be already altered in this case so it's kind of a silica rich material that would cross over the sea horizon we don't see that there's a kind of layer of uh, illuviation here so there is no like layer that would be enriched by the silica per C. Instead, what will be interesting here is what happens with the iron and the aluminia compounds. And in this case, it's actually a BIR horizon that develops because of the residue.
And especially again here, we can say that we got the sesky oxides in the BS horizon for pozzolization. And in this case, the BIR, so iron rich horizon from the B, which will be actually red color, exactly, not only the, or not especially the aluminium, but the iron itself. That will give the red color to these ferulic soils. So what we got here, again, mainly sesquioxides that remain in place. We have seen over there in case of pozzolization that it can be those silica rich materials that would remain in place. And in this case for fertilization, it's exactly the silica rich material that would be washed down, washed away. So that's why I can say it's kind of the opposite. And again, it's very much going to depend on the actual location the type of parent material, again, things like grain sizes, that's why a soil texture itself originally will be interesting to us. So this is uh, how we can just think about these differences in a very rough approach, because obviously in certain cases, these can be found in kind of a combination so whenever hydrolysis can happen, that will be when, uh, for example, this fertilization uh, can go and develop these kinds of soils. Um, yeah, so we got these different colors as well that we should identify that the red is going to be under the A, that will be definitely a ferulic soil with uh, iron rich material if there's going to be something very thick and white or gray that will be the e horizon of the puzzle and similarly we can think about the elevation which would cause an e horizon to develop even though maybe it will not be a puzzle soil itself but can be elevation, can be process in other types of soil present as well. And as we see, leaching is going to be something that can be a very important uh, component of other soil translocation processes as well. So this is, I think, just a kind of a summary of how we can think about these processes in the first place in terms of like differences to think about the structure of these kinds of soils and why they develop in certain ways and then in the next part we'll speak about those soils or those forming uh, soil forming kind of processes translocation processes that would involve a different regime of the movement of water where it's exactly the evapotranspiration that is more relevant than the precipitation.